Hello, everyone. I'm here with Ramona Tenorio from TU Evaluation. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. It's great to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, so to you, which means improvement in Hebrew, is an initiative to create a culturally responsive Jew of color led model and hub for formal program evaluation of racial justice work in the Jewish community. And of course, one of JLF's fall 2021 grantees. Uh, now culturally responsive evaluation is probably something that a lot of people in our networks are not directly familiar with. Could you tell us a little bit more about what that process looks like? Sure, I'd be happy to. I think first, I just wanna real quickly kind of give a, a definition. It's not, you know, the only definition of what evaluation is, but evaluation in general is as a systematic approach to understanding um, and learning about the impacts of, of programs, initiatives, interventions, and organizations. And it's a, a, an intentional process of gathering uh, and analyzing data to inform learning, decision-making, growth, and action. So that's just evaluation in general. And then CRE right. or culture responsive evaluation is really an approach to how to do that work. It's relatively new in the field of, of, of evaluation. And it was built out of a necessity and an awareness that traditional evaluation didn't necessarily meet the needs of particular communities, especially communities of color. Um, and uh, it, it is a way to interrupt and affect bias that kind of creeps into evaluation process. And it really is a way to center those um, who are most affected by the issues explored within evaluation. Yeah, so that really um, actually launches right into my next question, which is about how when TU launched in 2021, the field of Jewish social justice was developing pretty rapidly with a lot of communities launching new initiatives focused especially on racial justice, uh, which you know is one of those things that you talk about people who are, who are most affected by a lot of issues. So why was that such a critical moment for something like TU to exist? Yeah, um, you're right. It really does tie into the kind of whole history of what we know about research and evaluation. And similar to the uh, history of research, evaluation unfortunately has been used against communities of color throughout um, you know, its, its, since its inception. Um, and um, I like to always use kind of like this metaphor of a helicopter. So you have a helicopter researcher, helicopter evaluator where they fly in and fly out. They're not necessarily connected in any great um, way and meaningful way uh, to the communities in which they are evaluating or researching. And this type of dynamic um, never really takes into account community values, what the community wants, what the community needs or sees as important. Um, and so it's really is a, a colonizing approach to doing research and evaluation. And, and when we saw that so much um, work was wonderful work and, and there was a, you know, a burgeoning uh, awareness of, of, uh, of the work you know, of Jews of color and racial Jew, Jewish racial justice programs, that's wonderful. But we weren't seeing that the evaluators who are evaluating these programs necessarily are part of those communities or, or, or communities in which that those programming is directly targeting. So that's why we really saw that to you was so critical at this time uh, um, to, you know, to, to be launched and to increase the awareness of cultural responsive evaluation, but also to build uh, a network and a cadre of Jews of color who could lead uh, program evaluation work. So, um, yeah, well, that's, yeah. you know, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like, that, that's awesome uh, to sort of like hear that, you know, I love that helicopter metaphor, the way it talks about people just coming in, not really being a part of things, and then just, you know, it's really in and out, you know, and you're coming in on the top too, right? Just like right. dipping right in uh, and then, you know, with, with a bunch of loud and, you know, get it, pushing all the, everything that's on the ground away and <laughs> loud propellers uh, flying away. Um, so it's really cool to hear uh, about bringing in people who are kind of, both spend more time with organizations or more intimately familiar with the culture. Um, things like that sound really important. Uh, so how do you all hope to build that structure to support these JOC leaders and evaluators? Uh, and how do you hope to support coordination and, and collaboration in the work so it's not just 
some person in a helicopter flying in and leaving? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, we strongly believe it's extremely important to build and train, like I said, um, Jews of color as professional evaluators and to build a model of what it means to do JOC led um, cultural responsive evaluation work and what that particularly looks like in the realm of Jewish racial justice spaces. Um, we've built a solid foundation around this work using our Tiyuv Eitz Chaim uh, or Tree of Life cultural responsive evaluation model. We're really excited to incorporate that into our work. Um, we've built that with our you know, a, a community of stakeholders, teachers, sages, um, evaluators from uh, various communities, um, and e extreme, e um, a wonderful inspiration and guidance um, from some of the, you know, foremost um, leaders in cultural responsive evaluation. So we we're really excited to do that work. And we believe that JOC evaluators really bring an incredible lens of professional as well as lived experience to the work of culturally responsive and equitable evaluation. And for anyone who thinks that sounds cool, they just launched the application for the cohort this fall. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of this to hear about where to follow them, uh, apply, uh, and get involved. Uh, in the meantime, Ramona, can you tell me a little bit more about the experience you all have had in building that model and with and working with early adopters of your evaluation work? Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for mentioning the opening of our application. We're so excited um, that our new to you, new evaluator training and mentoring program will actually launch um, this fall in 2022. Um, uh, we have an amazing program lined up. Uh, with opportunities for fellows to engage with mentors and instructors who are nationally recognized leaders in the field. Um, and people like uh, can find out more about our program and apply at tuv.org slash apply. Um, but going back since TU began in 2021, we've been, we've had the privilege of working with our model and conducting uh, cultural responsive program evaluations with seven organizations as early adopters. And they are our uh, Sh Shiva'at Hamanim, our, the seven species as we um, affectionately refer to them as well. Um, these are just our beginning of the work that we're doing. And it's been an, an amazing experience, very rewarding and fruitful um, uh, working with them, learning from them, learning together as we do this work and we build our model together. Um, and knowing that the work that we do is going to make a lasting impact on these organizations. And not only them, but also has a ripple effect in the JOC ecosystem um, and advances racial justice in our world. And you know, from my understanding, because that is, you know, that, that sounds really amazing. It's really awesome to hear about the really positive experience you've had with a lot of these uh, organizations that you're working with. Um, but you've also had some experiences that make it clear that it can be tough to find funding for your work. Um, you know, it, places that maybe aren't so excited about uh, being early adopters or even helping to make this sort of work happen as, as these organizations. Could you tell me a little bit more about those tough experiences? Yeah, thank you. There, there are a couple factors I think that make this work and where we are kind of situated um, uh, challenging for us. Uh, first, not everyone knows what evaluation is, much less what cultural responsive evaluation is, and the important role that evaluation plays in making systemic change in advancing equity and justice. Um, secondly, we unapologetically view that part of justice and equity work in the Jewish community space means building and supporting JOC leadership. Um, we have encountered that not all funders understand that racial justice is inherently social justice. Um, so while they may fund social justice programs, they kind of um, are not so eager to fund things that are so um, at the forefront of racial justice. Um, so that, you know, that's a challenge. Um, and then in, outside of the Jewish philanthropic space, um, where there are foundations that do inherently fund racial justice as well as social justice. We are limited to applying for them because our work is specific to the Jewish community. 
you know, as an organization uh, like JLF dedicated to reform of Jewish philanthropic space, it's honestly a little bit disheartening to hear that uh, from one of our grantees that that's kind of the experience we have in a lot of the spaces. Um, but knowing that your work is dedicated to making a difference in, you know, places that operate kind of like that. Uh, and I know this is kind of a tough question, uh, <laughs> but I'm curious if you could sort of use the philanthropic space as an example for the sort of impact to you and culturally responsive evaluation, which I'm glad to hear that the, the acronym is CRE, uh, not CRE, because I'm sure these days you get a lot of uh, confusing, confusing feedback with that. Um, but what, you know, what kind of impact, if you were talking about the philanthropic sector, could CRE have on a broader sector of the Jewish community? Yeah, thank you. Well, first, I just wanna recognize that we are so thankful for the support of the Jewish Liberation Fund, particularly because of what I just talked about. Thank you for that um, sharing in our vision and supporting us as we go forward to, uh, to do this work. Um, um, so I think that to you has a lot to contribute to the philanthropic sector. Um, when, you know, when we first started this conversation, I shared that metaphor of uh, how evaluation has tr traditionally and historically been done, that kind of helicopter in, helicopter out. And unfortunately, um, historically, one of the sectors that has used that model has been philanthropy. Mm. Um, that dynamic is problematic for a couple different reasons in a couple different ways. And particularly, it's problematic for communities of color as well as small and grassroots nonprofit organizations. There is, has been, um, you know, there is a power differential between those who often hold uh, financial resources and communities of color who know what their communities need, know what their community wants, and yet those holding financial um, power um, try to uh, redirect resources to things that meet their needs and share, uh, meet their values. Um, uh, there's also been, uh, you know, a problem with representation and cultural cultural intimacy between, again, those who, who are making the funding decisions, not looking like, not representing, not sharing the same cultural um, uh, <clears throat> intimacy, understanding uh, values with their fundees. Um, funders who are so far removed from these communities, you know, are judging ultimately what they need and what success looks like um, for these programs. And, uh, Funders tend to be tend to require also data driven reports, which is wonderful, right? As as an evaluator, we love data driven reports. However, oftentimes these same communities, these same small nonprofits, don't have the resources, and the resources aren't built in to provide both capacity for the leadership to to be able to generate, collect, gather, and analyze the the, the information, but to know how to do that. Um, so, you know, building their own leadership capacity and identity around evaluation. And so with these, um, I do want to say that, you know, these issues, um, especially more recent, in more recent years have been recognized and there have been advances made for sure within the philanthropic sector, but there are still opportunities um, for growth. And to you brings a model and a lens that can help funders identify their own unique growth areas, right? And to build, um, to help them build a more just and equitable framework for their funding engagement. Yeah, it's, it's funny, you know, I remember I had a conversation with someone who works somewhere in the Jewish nonprofit world talking about a funder asking them, how many people did your project indirectly affect? And they said, how were we supposed to answer that question? They, it's, it's completely, sometimes the, obsession with with data driven stuff can really be uh, both like meaningless time consuming and just hard especially for a lot of these small uh, grassroots organizations and if anyone wants to learn about that uh, our first session in our Jewish philanthropy and why the left should care in our uh, in our who speaks for the Jews series online uh, you can check out my YouTube channel um, but thank you so much Ramona um, for your time uh, and for sharing all this with us if anyone's looking to follow your work get involved etc where can they find you well, thank you so much, Jordan. It's really been a pleasure to speak with you today and share what we're doing here at TU and share our vision and our 
mission and um, people can learn more about TU by going to tu.org and find about the initiative, our, our training program, um, or contact us about their own unique evaluation needs. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ramona, and have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Thank you.